Turn to Luke chapter 2. I'll read some familiar verses with you. It's the Christmas story. But there's something about the story that God laid on my heart that I want to share with you this morning. Uh, as I was thinking about it, the first thing that God brought to my mind was God is God. He's always been God. Before there was anything in creation, there was God. I've often, I've often wondered about that, and I've, I thought to myself, well, what was it like for God before there was anything? Just Him. Nothing but Him. I mean, there was nothing. There wasn't even no angels. There was nothing but God. How far back does that go? How many eons of time? We don't know. No man knows, and we never, probably never will know, unless he d decides to. If he chooses to share that with us, and we'll know it in the sweet by and by. But as for now, it's absolutely impossible for anybody to know about those things. <clears throat> but as I was pondering on all of that, I, I had a thought. I believe God spoke to my heart and mind and said, yes, I'm God, and I've always been, but I have never been alone. I said, what? He's never been alone. Because there's always been the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in one. Somebody said, who is Jesus? He's God in the flesh. And the Holy Spirit of God is the very essence, the very, well, it's, it's God himself but it's the very power of God. So, so God in himself, God in himself is one. But Jesus, remember Jesus said, Father, glorify thou me with the glory that I had with you before the world was. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word is the very essence of the Son. It is the Son Himself. The Word, no man has seen God at any time, save the Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared Him. So Christ, the Son, the Word, who became flesh, became a man. The Word was always with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, without Him was not anything made that was made. So God made all things, all things came into being, all things, that is, all things out, outside of God. God is not created, He's always been. But everything else that has come into being is creation. And the Word is the beginning of that creation. God has always been, but is the Word that is the beginning of creation. What does that mean? That means that anything and everything that ever came into existence, including the angels, everything came via or by the Word of God. When the Word spoke, it came into existence. All things were created by the Word. So God spoke, and it was so. If God said, let there be angels, there was angels. He, in other words, He created all things by His Word. By His Word. The Word that was in God God had a mind. He had a thought. Can you imagine the mind of God? No, we can't. But God's mind is so, is so great, it's infinite. His mind is infinite. And he had a thought. He had a will. God, did you know God has a will? 
We talk about our free will and our will, but how about God's free will and God's will, God's decision? God, dis God made a decision in himself. He decided, he had a will, he determined, and by that will and by that determination, by his own thoughts and his own mind and his own soul and heart, God spoke and his word created what his mind thought. Whatever was in his heart, whatever was in his mind, whatever was in his, in his purpose, the word created that. It brought it into being. It brought it into existence. It brought it so that you could see it. Whatever was in God's mind, he saw it first in his own mind. The word brought it forth so you could literally see it in creation. God thought of everything that is in creation. There's not one thing in all of creation that did not come from the mind of God. Think about that. Every molecule, every atom that makes up everything in the universe was in the mind of God. How it works, now I'm not a chemist, I'm not a scientist, you know, I'm not, I'm not educated in that area. I, I, you know, there's some men that could tell you all about those kinds of things. You can read about it, you can hear about it. And it's very interesting to, to learn about all these things in science. But all the scientific facts that, that, that exists came from the mind of God. And whatever was in his mind, his word created it, brought it forth. So that angels and man could know who God is. God says, I'll create a man. And this man will know who I am. And I will create all the universe and everything that's in it so that man will know how great that I am, that there is no other God beside me. He said, there is no other God. He said, I behold, I made all things. I brought all things into existence. And he said, there is no other God beside me. I am God and I'm God alone. But the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit were always there, one, in one God. They were one God. But remember in the beginning when God made, when God made man, he said, let us make man in our image, in our own image. Now, who was he talking to? He wasn't talking to the angels because they don't create nothing. He wasn't talking to the animals. He wasn't talking to any other being but one. And that was the Word. That was the Word, the Son. Let us make man in our image. So God was telling me there as I was thinking about all these things, God says, I am one, and I've never been alone. Amen. What? <laughs> that I'm one, and I have never, ever been alone. So God shows us that in him there is no loneliness. In him there is no lonely days, lonely hours, or lonely moments. So then why did God create all that he did? Why did he create everything? For his own glory. Amen. For his glory. To demonstrate how great that he is, to magnify his own self, to glorify himself, by all that he created, giving him that glory. Amen. And what God does then, God doesn't subtract. He adds. And he multiplies. He doesn't divide. He multiplies. 
He doesn't take away. He adds. Yes. Amen. Amen. When God spoke everything into existence in the beginning, remember everything he created in the beginning. He created the trees and all the vegetation and all the animals and man himself. And to each one of them, he said, prosper, replenish, and fill the earth. The trees, he said he created the trees with the seed in itself. So that the tree in the beginning would produce its own kind. He told the animals and the fish and the flowers of the air and man himself to produce his own kind and fill the earth. Replenish the earth and fill it. And he made all things with this in mind. God is not one who takes away, but who adds. Because God believes in togetherness. God believes in unity. God believes in numbers, just like himself. God wants us to understand that apart from him, apart from him, we are alone. Apart from him, we are lost. Apart from him, we have no purpose. Apart from him, we may live and he may be merciful to us and we may go our whole lifetime in this world without him. But without him, we are totally lost. And without him, we are really alone. Without him, we're in the darkness. Without him, we're without purpose. Without him, we are vain and without hope. So, God sends Jesus, and I was thinking of Jesus here in Luke, the second chapter, as Christ came and laying in that manger. As I was thinking, here was a, a peasant woman and her betrothed, Joseph, going to a little small, insignificant town in those days, Bethlehem. And while she was there, she brought forth her son. Here in, in, in the darkness of the world, in the most, one of the most out of the way places, Christ was born. And as I was thinking about, I'm thinking about all of this, the Lord says, but when he came, look what happened. When he was born, the shepherds in the field saw and heard an angelic host coming from heaven and pronouncing and announcing to them the birth of Christ. And then where they could find him. And there was with the host, with the angels, a heavenly host, a great heavenly host, praising God. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill towards them that he loves. And, and it rang through the heavens and rang down through the valleys and the hills of Judea. And the light of God shone everywhere. The announcement of Christ to this world was a great thing that happened, a great event. And so the shepherds came, and sometime during that early years of his life, the wise men came. Whether it was the same night or the next day or within the, within the few weeks or months of his life, the wise men came and offered him gifts. Yes. So what God does attracts. Mm -hmm. What God does brings glory. Yes. What God does touches the hearts of men and brings them to God. What God does is to take men from his lost state, from the darkness of this world, from the place of his loneliness, 
and apart from God. And when God brought Christ, suddenly he brings men to God. Suddenly men come to find Jesus. Let me tell you something. God, God's purpose and God's reason is for us to never, ever be alone and in the darkness of this world. But to know God and to find him so that we will never, ever again be lonely or, or by ourselves or alone in this world, in the darkness of this world. Christ told us in Scripture, as he was speaking to his disciples, on the night of his arrest, he said, every one of you, of his disciples, will forsake me tonight. Every one of you will run away and leave me. But I am not alone. Amen. For the Father is with me. He's always with me. At another time, he was speaking to the Jews, and he was saying the same thing. He said, the Father is with me, and he never leaves me. He's always here, and I always do those things that please him, and he's always with me. He said, in your law, it says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. He said, I'm one that speaks for myself, and my Father is another one. That's two witnesses Amen. who I am. The Father is always with me. Now, let's just read the verses. I want to get a little more into this as we go along, but let me just read some verses in, in Luke chapter 2. It came to pass in those days and went a, a, decree out, a decree out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was while they were there, the days were accomplished, he should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same, same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And there shall be a sign to you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So they came and they found the babe lying in the manger. And when they saw him, they, they rejoiced and they worshipped him. Now, the Lord is showing us here that God in his infinite wisdom is bringing to man that which he purposed in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That man would have fellowship with God. For without God, he is alone in this world. He's on yes. his own. That's right. to, be, to be on your own without God is a sad state. Yes. Man today who doesn't believe in God, who believes in Christ, who doesn't believe in Christianity and Christians and, and reject all of that, live their lives in this world not knowing that the life they live 
is a very sad state. For to be without God is to be alone. So you may have friends. You may have loved ones. You may have, you may have that all around you. But without God, man is alone. That's right. yeah. Without God, man faces this world alone. And there is no hope for him at all. There's no hope in him. There's no hope around him. There is no hope for man. The only hope there is is in God. That's right. The only comfort there is, the only real life there is, is in him alone. Sin, sin, the Bible teaches us, separates man from God. Yes. Your sins have separated you from your God. Your sins have caused God's hand to be shortened. Yes. But his but, but his but his but his arm can save. Yes. Amen. And his arms can deliver. <coughs> That's why he sent Jesus. <coughs> But sin separates man, therefore sin, sin cuts man off from all that God wanted for him in the beginning. God, you see, God, being who he is, made everything to be fruitful. That's right. Amen. God created the natural things of this world. To be fruitful and to multiply, to be added to, to increase. He created it that way. God created us to be the same way in him. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But in me, in me. You can bear much fruit. Yes. So sin, sin keeps man from being fruitful. Sin keeps man and makes him alone and, and severed. It, it, it severs him from the life that is in God. So sin draws man away over into a place that is dark yes. and lonely and cold and without hope and despair and death and judgment and all those things that are adverse to that which is light and good which is God. So when Jesus came when Jesus came and he went to that cross you know what he did? He said, the Father has never left me. He's never forsaken me. All that I do pleases him. Christ in his lifetime was a very productive, I would say, to say the least, Jesus was a very productive person. He was a very fruitful man. He was more fruitful than any person that's ever lived on this planet, on this earth. Christ, the Bible teaches us, is the Word of God made flesh, so that this Word, as it was in the beginning, as it was in the beginning, God says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth through His Word. He commanded. And everything, everything came into existence as God commanded. But it came from His own mind, His own thoughts, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful. So God's word created the fruitfulness in the earth. But when sin came, when sin came, man became cut off from God. Not that, not that he doesn't has it reproduced, not that he hasn't been, been fruitful in, in, the, in, in his flesh. But in his in his walk with God, in his walk with God has been cut off. So that man is alone in all that he does. Sin has separated him from God, who commanded him to be fruitful and multiply. 
But now man has all that he has and does all that he does, but he is so alone. And he is lonely, and he is without, and he is in despair, and he's full of sorrow, and he's full of pain, and full of trouble, and full of woe, and he's full of, and he's burdened down, and he lives his life in the darkness of this world without God. When Jesus came, his words was fruitful. His works was fruitful. Amen. He was never married. He didn't have children. He didn't have a wife and children like some some one of them, make, make some people believe that he was, which is nonsense. Jesus Christ never married, never had children as a man. But his words and his works and his life was very fruitful unto God. Amen. Why is that? Because he was always with the Father. There was never separation. There was never he was never in the darkness. He was never alone. He was never full of sorrow and despair. He didn't live in, in this world of, of woe and darkness. But he was the light of the world. Amen. He was the light that came into the world. He was the light. And being the light, he was fruitful in all that he did. And all that he said. But you know what? The word of God is the most fruitful seed in all the world. Hallelujah. Amen. I said the word of God is the most fruitfulest of seeds that could ever be. Is the word of God. The Word of God produces more and, and than, than any seed that could ever be planted in this earth. The Word of God is the most fruitful. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So that what God does is, is the most fruitful, is the most, uh, the most uh, desirable, the most perfect, the most beautiful. It glorifies God. It gives praise to God. It lifts men out of the darkness of this world and brings them into the fellowship and the light of the Father. Amen. Without the word, without the word that came, without that word, we're still lost in the darkness. We're still without God. We're still without hope, and we're still alone. But with the word of God coming in, hallelujah, yes. God is fruitful. God multiplies. God adds. God begins to work, and he brings us out of that darkness hallelujah. into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. And gives us fellowship with that God who made us in the first place. Amen. Amen. What am I here for? You're here for the very God that made you. Amen. God didn't put you here for yourself. He put you here for himself. That's right. That's right. That's right. Without him, therefore, without him, your life is really vain. It really means nothing. But with him, then your life means something to God. Hallelujah. How many want your life to mean something? Amen. Amen. Then the only way it's going to mean anything is if you be with him. Yes. Amen. 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 Sin, sin destroys that idea. But Christ, now listen, as I was thinking about this, the Lord, you came. And you said, the Father's always with you, and you're never alone. Like you've always been with the Father, and the Father's always been with you, you've always been, and you've never been alone. This loneliness comes not from God. Did you know loneliness doesn't come from God? No, no. Loneliness comes from sin. That's right. Loneliness comes in man who has sinned against God. That's where loneliness comes in. Sorrow doesn't come from God, it comes from man. Grief doesn't come from God, it comes from sin that's in man. Amen? Amen. All these things that men contend with through life, all the problems and all the sorrows and all the griefs and all the struggle and all the complications and all the things that we, we, we put up with in life doesn't come from God, it comes from sin that's in man. Amen. So Jesus, when he was here, being without sin, he was without sin. How many believe Jesus was without sin? Amen. So him being without sin, he had no complications. That's right. <laughs> he really didn't have any problems. Jesus didn't have any sorrow. He didn't have any grief. He didn't have any woes. He didn't have any regrets. Wouldn't it be wonderful to live like that? He didn't have anything bother him when he got up in the morning or when he went to bed at night. He could sleep like a baby or he could stay up all night and pray. It didn't matter with him. He didn't have any problem with anything. He was absolutely perfect with God. His union and fellowship with God. He was absolutely just as content as any man could possibly be. Amen. There wasn't anything that was lacking in the person of Jesus Christ. Think about that. He was a man who lacked nothing. He had nothing of this world, but he lacked nothing. That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. Isn't that something? 
the very God, the very Word who made this world and all that's in it, when He came here, didn't care for one iota of this world. Sure. He didn't care about riches or gold or silver. He didn't care about uh, he didn't care about buildings. He didn't care about a popular opinion. He didn't care about trying to be the pop, most popular guy around, even though he became very, very well known. Very popular. He didn't come for that reason. He didn't come just to, just to try to prove something to anybody. He didn't have to prove anything. He was who he was. Amen. Amen. He didn't have to prove anything. He is who he is. Right. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was therefore totally at ease with himself and with what he was and who he was and what he did. Amen. And he knew that he, what it was and who he was. And he knew that he had love for people and compassion for people. So therefore, he began to reach out to people and heal them and touch them and make them well. By the thousands and thousands, there's untold, untold thousands of people that Jesus must have touched their lives and healed their bodies. We don't know exactly how many it was. But John says nobody knows. The world itself can contain the books that should be written of all the things he did and said. But we know that the life of Jesus Christ was one of the most outstanding magnificent, marvelous lives that's ever been on this earth. Amen. Amen. We, all of us today really don't know, we really don't know today exactly how it was in those days. But to be there and to, to be a witness of what he did and what he said must have been one of the most uh, privileged things that could ever happen to anybody. To walk with Jesus on this earth and see him in action and listen to him and follow him and just listen to him and be with him had to be the most greatest privilege of any man on this earth. Amen. Because his life was the greatest life that ever lived on this earth. Amen. Amen. If you think of all the men that you could ever think of in history that you that you admire, that were great men, men that you could truly admire, Christ was far greater. Yeah. Amen. That's right. He was far greater than any man that you could ever think of in your mind right now. Any person in your lifetime or that you heard of or read about in history, Christ was greater than all those men. Amen. He was the greatest life that ever lived. Amen. So Christ was totally <coughs> and absolutely content in who he was and what he was. He had no problem. He had no problem with anything. He was the problem solver. Amen. He had the answer yes, he did. for every question. Amen. He had the answer for every man's question. He had, he had, he had it all inside of him, all that man needed, all that man could possibly want or, or, or know of God. Jesus had it inside of him. Amen. He is the answer to every man. Amen. Yes. And why is that? Because he said, I have never never no broken fellowship. What that means is there is absolutely nothing of this world of creation that is corrupt. Because all of God's creation that he made in the beginning is corrupt today. It's corrupt. Sin is corrupt there. Jesus said, of all that is in this corrupt world, nothing, nothing of this world separates me. Not one thought, not one thing, not anything, not any desire, not any imagination of this world has come into me to separate me from the very thoughts of God. All that I am is all He is. And all that I say is all that He says. And all that you see in me is him. Yes. All that I am, I'm with the Father. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Amen. Christ was full of joy. Not maybe in the sense that we think of the world of in, in the world as joy, but a joy that supersedes 
a joy that is beyond any joy of this earth. Because while men may think in this world they have joy, they are without God. And without God, there's nothing but sorrow. That's right. If men, when men meet God in their heart and in their soul, then they know that that's the truth. Amen. Of all that you've experienced in life and of all that you've had in life and of all the good things that's happened to you and all the things that you call your blessings in life, with your family, your husband, your wife, your children, whatever it is, it's happened to you in life. When you meet God in your heart, suddenly you find a joy yes. that you've never known before. You find a blessing that you've never experienced before. Yes. You find you find fellowship that you've never known. And now you realize, that, you know, really before you say to yourself, you know, really before, I was really, I didn't really have anything. I thought I had it all, but I didn't have anything. I thought I had friends and loved ones and family and everything around me. I had it all. But when I met Jesus, I realized, man, that ain't nothing compared to him. There's nothing in this earth, there's nothing in the, in the fruitfulness of your life that can compare to the fellowship and the love of the Father. Amen. 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 Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Somebody said, what are you, what are you telling us to do? Tell us to shed all this stuff and get rid of it? No. What I'm telling you is when we come to know the love of God, the love that we have to others increases. The love that we have to others becomes real. It becomes fervent. It becomes solid. It becomes the true love of God that comes into our heart. Amen. Amen. Yes. Because sometimes we think we really love somebody and we really don't. I don't think we really love someone. We really, we really haven't really learned how to love them right. But when we come to know the love of God, then we really know what it means to love somebody. Yes, amen. Because now, now I'm not walking through life. Listen, no matter how many people you have in your life that surround you, your family, your friends, your loved ones, no matter how many people you have that you know in your lifetime, without God in your life, you are. And when your time comes to die, you're going to be afraid. You're going to be afraid, and you want everybody around you, and you're so afraid, and you're reaching out, and, and you, just, you don't want to die, and, and you're, you're so, you know, what's wrong with you? You're fixing to die, and you're going out into the darkness and the unknown. Because in reality, every single soul, When you stand before God in the judgment day, you're not going to have your mom and your dad and your wife and your husband and your children and all these people, your friends and loved ones around you to be with you, to back you up, to stand there with you, and to hold your hand and pat you on the back and give you a hug. Stand there next to you with God. You're going to be there alone. You're going to stand there bare naked alone. I'm not talking about physically. But you got the point. As far as God's concerned, he can look at you right now and see all the way through you. You don't have whether you got clothes on or not, he knows all about you. That's right. He can see right through you. He knows everything about you. So you stand naked and open before God. That's right. And you will stand there alone. No one will stand there for you. You will stand alone. Now. When Jesus came, all of his lifetime, he walked and talked and fellowship with his Father every day, every moment. He could sleep at night and dream sweet dreams of heaven, of his Father. Whatever it was that Jesus, he, 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 was, he was the most peaceful Person. Peaceful. You know, I'm like a peaceful person. Yeah. Boy, it's hard to be around somebody who's always, you know. <laughs> Amen. Boisterous. You know, boisterous. And just, just, you know, just, what's the word? They have no, 
and no peace. It was constantly at it. The restless. The restless life. I love to be around some of those people. Don't you? Don't you like to be at peace? Yes. <laughs> Jesus was at peace. One thing I love about Jesus, one of the most greatest things about him, I think. I think that's one of the greatest things about heaven itself is the peace. The peace. Give me some peace. Give me some peace and quiet. <laughs> huh? Give me some peace and quiet. Be joyful, yeah. I want to be joyful, I want to be happy and shout and all that stuff. But boy, I tell you what, you know, all of that stems from and is ruled by mm -hmm. and dominated by the peace of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus lived in peace, the most peaceful person. You could feel it emanating from him. Mm -hmm. That's right. It was so thick and so great, it just it must have emanated everywhere he went. Yeah. And that peace of God gave everybody some sort of, they just, they just had an assurance, confidence. They just, they just knew, man, you, 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 you feel that? Hey, something about Jesus, it gives me great confidence and rest and assurance. Remember every time an angel appeared to somebody like Mary or whoever, said, Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Do not be afraid. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Don't be afraid. In other words, be at peace. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Same thing Jesus said when he walked on the water. They thought it was a ghost walking on the water of their own. And Jesus got, Don't be afraid. And then when you reach the storm and the, and the winds and the waves, what does he say? Peace. 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 Relax. Calm down. Stop. Stop the wind. Stop the blowing. Stop the raging. Stop. Calm down. And suddenly, suddenly, at his word, yes. at his word, Amen. peace like a river. Peace. Came across that sea. He hushed and quiet, laid down and went to sleep. The great calm. There was a great calm. I love a calm day. Amen. You like a calm day? Yeah. Amen. I love a nice, cool, autumn, calm day. You go outside and a lot of clouds in the sky. It's cool and oh, calm. Yeah. And the temperature is just right. Man, everything's at peace and everything smells good. And I love a peaceful day. Like hot, windy, boisterous, <laughs> miserable day. I like a calm, cool day. That's what God is saying to me. Peace. Cool it, man. <laughs> cool it. Lay down and be quiet. That's the way Jesus was. He was a peaceful man. Now, if you get him riled up, the Pharisees know how to do it. I'd get his anger up, but he did that for, he was righteous in his anger. He was angry at them because of his father, because of his union with God, because of his worship and his fellowship with the father, and they were violating that. He rebuked them. He was angry for the father's sake. You and I should be the same way. I have fellowship with God. It angers me when sometimes I get angry when the enemy comes into my life and tries to upset and turn the card over or whatever and, and, and try to destroy this peace that I have with God, this fellowship I have with God. It makes me angry. Yes. When my flesh rises up and wants to do something, to do something, to do wrong, do something wrong, I get angry at myself. I say, God, oh, I hate you. Take it away from me. Amen. Oh, Lord, I'd like to be at peace with yeah. you. <laughs> Amen. I want to be at peace with God. I don't want nothing to break that fellowship. But without that, you see, we're lonely. But we can have the Lord. Listen to me this morning. 
when you know the Lord like Jesus did and like Jesus does to follow. You'll never be lonely. You'll always be at peace. Even if all your friends forsake you, so what? I got to follow. Amen. <laughs> Everybody hates you, so what? God loves me. I'm, I'm not alone. <laughs> When Jesus came, then he had all this, he had all this in his life. But when he went to the cross, he took upon himself all of our sins and all of our shortcomings and all of our trespasses and all the darkness of this world, the darkness of man. Sin took its toll. Christ said, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. He began to feel the weight and the sorrow of the lonely. Yes. Not fruitfulness, not togetherness. God wants a happy family. He wants us all to be fruitful and multiply. In Him, He wants us to enjoy His goodness. He wants us to, to prosper and do well and enjoy all that He gives to us in life. In knowing Him, Adam knew God in the beginning. He knew Him. And He said, you can freely eat of everything that's here. It's all for you. You can take anything you want. But one thing. Don't do that. He laid the law down. Just as sure as God lays the law down, man's going to try to say, well, what the world is he don't want to do? Adam enjoyed all the blessings of God and the fellowship of God. He wasn't. But God says, you know what? I made a man, and he is a man. Yes. And even though he knows who I am, it's not good for him to be alone. That's right. It's not good for him to be alone. As a man. Amen. So I'll give him a wife. Amen. Amen. He gave him a wife. To be fruitful and multiply. Jesus. and that blessing that he lived in every day of his life. That was set aside. And now he must take upon himself alone. Yes. Jesus Christ plus somebody else, no. It was Jesus alone. The Bible says that he bare our sins on his own body on the tree. He alone bore our sins. So Jesus took upon himself that aloneness, the darkness of man, the separation that man experiences every day because of his sin. Jesus took it upon himself. And for the first time in his life, he cries from the cross, My God, why have you forsaken me? He's alone. He's separated. Because sin sin was darkness to Christ. Yes. We don't know. We will never know the horror, the horror and the torment and the grief 
and the sorrow that Jesus experienced on that cross. Because he took the sorrow and the sins and the loneliness and the darkness of the whole world upon his shoulders. Mm -hmm. Upon his own shoulders. Yes. Every sin that's ever been committed or ever will be until the end of time, Jesus took it upon himself. Every soul, every man, all the darkness of this world, he took upon himself. He said, this is the hour of darkness. Mm -hmm. yes. He never lived in the darkness. He never experienced the weight of sin. He never knew what it was to be separated from his father. He never knew what it was to be lonely. Even though he might have had many people around him, he didn't ever know what it meant to be lonely because he had the father with him. But the wonderful thing about God is God is so beautiful and wonderful that he attracts others to come to him. He, he, he multiplies and he adds all, praise God, and all that come to him to know his goodness. Yes. Yes. He multiplies that. All of us know God for ourselves. I know you and I love you and I want to worship with you and get to know you and love you and all these things. But I know within myself as well as you do that without God we have nothing with each other. Yes. Without God in our lives, you probably wouldn't even know me. Right. And I wouldn't know you. Right. You probably wouldn't care about me, and I probably wouldn't care about you. We don't mean anything to one another without God in our lives. That's right. So God is the binding force. That's right. Hallelujah. God is what we all have in common. God is what makes us stick together. That's right. God is what makes the impossible possible. Yeah, that's right. Look at one of us and say, I'm an impossible person. <laughs> I'm an impossible person, but God makes me possible. Yes, it does. I'm a hard one to get along with, but the Lord sure makes a difference to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I may not be to your liking in the flesh, but God does something inside of me that will cause you to love me. Hardened people don't like you. They talk about you. I just don't want to be around. It's okay. That's right. That's right. Amen. And you know what? You'll just be faithful to God and love Him and don't want to love others anyway and pray for Him anyhow. God will even cause your enemies to be at peace with you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. What is impossible with man? What man can't do in himself, Jesus can do. Amen. That's right. Amen. Here's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. Man without God stands alone in judgment. But Christ came to fix the problem. He came so that we will not stand alone. He took my loneliness. He took my separation that I had from God in the orders. He took that division that sin created in this world and laid it upon his shoulders. He said, I will take your place and I will stand by myself because he's big enough and he's perfect enough and he is holy. And he is pure. Yes. And he is perfect. And he is righteous. And he is the son of a living God. Hallelujah. Amen. And who else but the son of a living God can take upon himself the sins of the world? Who but the son of God can come down to this earth and take upon him the darkness to the cross and bear it to Calvary? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. And pray, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Amen. Amen. To his own enemies who crucified him, Jesus forgave them. Lord, they stand in the darkness. They stand alone without you. 
while I stand in the gap for them. Yes, they do. Whatever it is, Lord, that they have done to separate them from you, I take the punishment. And now, Father, bind and heal the breach and bring mankind. Reconcile him back to yourself. Yes. So that he may know what it means. He may have the joy of knowing that he's never alone, but that you're always with him. Remember, God says, I will never leave you. Never say I will never forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. To those whom he loves, to those that trust him. Yes. I will never, ever leave you. Amen. Jesus told his disciples before he left this earth, before he ascended up into the heavens, he said, go and preach the gospel to every creature. And then baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He said, Lo, I am with you always. Yes. In other words, you are never going to be alone. Amen. Amen. You're going to face a lonely world. You're going to face the lives of lonely men everywhere you go. The darkness of this world will enclose around about you. But I send you forth as the light of the world. That's right. And you are the Furthermore, I'm with you. That's right. Therefore, you'll never be alone. Right. Hallelujah. Don't let the darkness of this world make you think you're alone. Don't let the problems of life make you think you're alone. Don't let, this, don't let the devil come upon you and jump on your back and make you think that you're alone because you're never alone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm taking care of the problem. I'll always be with you. Amen. Amen. this very present hour. He is not alone. All of heaven rejoices with Christ. All the prophets rejoice in Christ. All of the saints who have died and gone on before us stand in his presence and worship Christ at this very moment. There was only one time in his life that he was alone. And that's when he took your loneliness. That's right. And my loneliness. That's right. When he took your burden and my burden and separated himself from God. Yes. To be a sacrifice. To give his life a ransom for many. And the Father looked down. that gathered around him as enemies beheld him. Some of his loved ones stood near the cross, John and Mary's mother. <clears throat> the two thieves on both sides were in his presence. But Jesus was alone. Yes. He bore our sins all alone. And when he rose from the dead, triumphant. Yes. All of heaven is with him. The Father is with him. He stands by his side. He's at his right hand. He has made him Lord of all. He's given him a name above every name in heaven and earth. That the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Everything then that Jesus is now, forevermore. He is fruitful. He said, unless I die, he said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it's alone. That's right. But if it dies, it burns forth. said in the beginning, be fruitful. Why? Because God believes in being truthful. God believes in adding. God believes in, in, in praise. He's never been, he doesn't believe in loneliness. God wants to add and multiply. He wants yeah. everything to gain. He wants everything that, that hallelujah, to be much in this world. That's right. In our lives. Mm -hmm. See, if I die, the 
brain dies, it will bear much fruit. Yes. God gave me a thought and put it on Facebook yesterday. God planted a seed. God planted a seed in the womb <coughs> of this earth. Yes. And after 2,000 years, it continues to bear much fruit. Yes. Unto life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus went alone so that he would not be alone. Amen. Jesus bore the sins of many. So that we all could enjoy the fruitfulness of his righteousness. Yes, amen. Christ may have been alone at the cross. And he was. He had to be because nobody else was ever could be worthy to bear what he did. But I got news for you. He'll never be alone again. No. Jesus died on that cross and they buried him in the tomb for three days and three nights. He was dead. Well, I got news for you. He will never die. He said, Behold, I am he that liveth and was dead. And I am alive forevermore. Amen. I am alive forevermore. Why? God's work will continue. Yes. God's plan will continue. He is victorious. Yes. He will never stop. He will never die. He will reign forever and ever and ever and ever. And we will reign with him. And we will never be lonely again. We'll never be alone by ourselves in the dark without hope again. Because Jesus took that all away and gave us his hope and gave us his life and gave us his power and gave us his faith and gave us his spirit and gave us all that he had we have in Christ Jesus. Thank God for the baby that was born in Bethlehem. When he was born and attracted the shepherds and all the angels of heaven came down to announce his birth. And when he walked upon this earth thousands and thousands and thousands were glad to follow him and go where he went. Yes. But when he went to that cross he went alone. Yes. Rose from the dead and sent it up on high. Yes. Into this very hour, this very moment. Listen to me. This very moment, this very moment, as we sit here and you're looking at me and I'm looking at you right now. Yes. The angels are shouting and praising at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The angels of heaven are rejoicing with all the saints at what God has done in Christ Jesus. There ain't no loneliness in heaven. No. There's no sorrow and sadness and grief in heaven. There's no regrets in heaven. No. No regrets. In Christ Jesus, there is no regrets. In Christ Jesus, there is no sorrow. In him, there is no sadness. In him. Fellowship with God. That true, that true fellowship, that true togetherness with God that He wanted with me all along is finally fulfilled and realized in Christ Jesus. Stand with Who was that baby born in Bethlehem? very one who came to take away our loneliness and separation and bring us together. The one who came to take our judgment alone by himself to stand in our place and take that judgment. And now, hallelujah, we have that sweet Never again will you have to be alone in your own guilt. That's right. Whenever you 
you sin as a Christian, you feel like you feel so guilty. I know I do. I do something wrong. I feel so guilty when I sin. But you know what? I'll never, ever again alone in my guilt. No. <laughs> I'm the one guilty. Jesus took it for me. The cross. Yeah. Amen. And he said, I promise you, I'll never be left alone again. Sin cannot separate you from children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Lord, you came by yourself to take upon yourself our sins and be born in the grave. And now you have restored us and raised us up as your daughter. Hallelujah. The separation has been healed. The division is healed. The gap has been closed. Thank you. 